Frank Ocean's become one of those incredibly respected artists whereby uh, an online review from a random guy on the internet probably holds no weight at all. But you know what? I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to do it anyway. He's really managed to establish himself as an elite figure in the world of music to the point where everyone is always rushing to find out when he's going to drop new music. He trends on Twitter like every th three days. And then everyone is like, why is he trending? Is he dropping music? And then it's just like some random thing about some random thing that is about some random other thing that has nothing to do with him making music. And then most of the tweets are like, why is he not released any music? But I think most people would accept and recognize that this man is meticulous. He's not gonna drop anything for the sake of dropping it. And despite the fact that it's been six years since Blonde, He's going to get a huge amount of hype even when he does drop his next project anyway. We don't know what it's going to sound like because the singles recently have been nothing like anything that he gave us in the early days of his career. And the early days of his career are full of gems because I even think Nostalgia Ultra has become very overlooked over time because it's been overshadowed by what he's released since then. But of course, Channel Orange being his first official studio album. I mean, come on, what a momentous release to give people on your on your first album. Th this album is fantastic. I didn't hear it in 2012. I wasn't as big on music as I am today. I was a bit younger as well. <clears throat> Listened to different kind of things. Wasn't really on the R&B type, type of stuff back when I was a wee young man. But I don't know what this album sounded like upon release, but surely people were impressed when this came out because today, 10 years later, this sounds really timeless. It sounds like an R&B classic. There are so many moments where you feel like you just want to get drunk and sing along to every lyric that this man sings. The choruses are always so sing-alongy. It, it, it is really impressive how he does this across the whole album and there aren't really any missteps. It starts pretty boldly actually with probably the biggest ballad of the album and I don't know many albums that start like that. I mean especially considering so many of these other tracks are a bit more upbeat, a bit more of a tempo to them, particularly a track like Pyramids which takes you in all kinds of different directions. But do, al do albums start as somber as this usually? I think that's kind of bold. And it's R&B perfection as well, his vocals sound exquisite, the lyrics of course are very typically invested in some kind of love but i think it's sold pretty well as well you know it's a pretty basic idea of thinking about someone are you also thinking about me because i'm thinking about you are you thinking of me because i'm thinking of you but he sells it really well and that's the thing with frank his lyrics aren't necessarily the most inventive in the world but he manages to make them work. That statement rings incredibly true for the track Forrest Gump. I mean, Forrest Gr Gump, you run my mind, boy. I mean, it's just such a basic sentence and a basic kind of metaphor and reference to an obvious film. But I don't know, man, I kind of think it, I kind of think it rules. The smoky guitar on that track as well offers a different world of what R&B can offer in the Frank Ocean lens because this track sounds completely different to many of the other songs on the album and yet it still sounds really fresh and crisp. He can also give us probably the catchiest pop song on the album, maybe of his whole career with a track like Lost. I mean, Jesus Christ, the lyrics are pretty nonsensical throughout and I don't even know what he's talking about most of the time in this track, but God damn. It works. And that's essentially a brief overview of what this album has to offer. There are three different tracks here that give you something very different. And the album never feels like it's straying off balance. You know, it's not incohesive or anything like that. It just always gives you something slightly different and yet it never really lets you down. I like some of the track's lyrical themes as well. I feel like Sweet Life is an interesting track and also Super Rich Kids. I feel like these two tracks are basically paired together in that they both touch on, you know, success and wealth and what money can really bring. Can it really bring happiness or is it just not enough? What I like mostly about Sweet Life is how it sounds so expensive and lush. Like this is just such a rich, sounding song and yet most R&B tracks that would sound like this 
would be materialistic, would be luxurious, would be talking about having the riches and all that kind of stuff. I mean, I, I don't have any specific ex examples off the top of my head, but I'm sure you can picture the kind of song I'm talking about. But of course, the lyrics tell a different story, which I really like. I like tracks that subvert your expectations like that. He's not exactly doing anything totally out of the ordinary here, but he sells it in an incredibly strong way. And it's just a great track. And of course, Super Rich Kids, touching on a very similar thing. Uh, still searching for that real love that he says on the post chorus, I guess you could call it. You know, even having all of the things that you have, it ain't gonna bring the happiness that you're looking for. Of course, the Earl sweatshirt feature here is really strong as well. Uh, the odd future days were pretty much still there, I think, when this uh, track dropped. So these, you know, link-ups, these collaborations were to be expected. But a collaboration that was not to be expected, my friends, Andre 3000. I looked into this, by the way, and apparently Big Boy was meant to be on this track as well, Pink Matter with Andre 3000. That would have been pretty cool. But supposedly the idea of Outkast reuniting on a different artist's song just didn't sit well with them so they didn't you know they abandoned the idea basically and of course you just end up getting Andre but Jesus Christ man this guy for many years even up until very recently has been killing it on features he is a feature king just look at the James Blake feature that he delivered a few years back it was fantastic and of course this track here as well is great too touching on you know I guess uh, the, the the dichotomy of woman on the lyrics throughout this track. Um, Andre 3000 kind of brings it home with the idea of, you know, you're bad at being good, you're good at being bad, why don't you just go to hell? <laughs> but that section is really good though because he's rapping before that and then he does this kind of like animated singing voice that you totally expect to hear on a, like a D'Angelo album and of course it's not surprising that I would reference an artist like that on a Frank Ocean album because I'm pretty confident that this man takes influence from D'Angelo. I mean, who in the soul R&B world doesn't? That's the thing with Frank, though. I mean, his influences are very obvious and clear if you know the genre of R&B well. But it's not like you're constantly making references to other artists in the genre saying that he sounds like this and he sounds like that. He's always managed to make it his own. I mean, I think most people would agree that, especially with Blonde, where I think most of his fan base would agree that he really came into his own with that album. And to be fair, he did. But even this album, I still think, has a lot of gold on it to the point where it could easily be argued that this is better than that. But you could argue it either way anyway. Speaking of other R&B artists, so I feel like Palette Jones has a bit of a Miguel feel to it, which is a weird reference to make because I feel like since 2012, Frank has just kind of skyrocketed and Miguel's become less relevant, even, even though Miguel did put out some pretty good music. But, you know, it's just a shame that, you know, Miguel didn't really kind of live up to what he could have been and Frank just kind of took the torch and ran. Going back to some of the lyrical ideas though, I feel like Crack Rock is an interesting track touching on drug addiction and kind of like, you know, the lifestyle that it can lead to and how those neighbourhoods do get neglected and people in those neighbourhoods uh, essentially just get left behind. I mean, the most poignant lyric here that I wrote down is the first lyric of the song. It kind of hits you hard. It does hit you hard, you know. But yeah, he says, uh, you don't know how little you matter until you're all alone. Fucking hell. The really interesting end section, though, where he talks about, like, police and how, uh, you know, it... If if he, you know, if someone shot a police officer, there'd be hundreds of people looking for you. But of course, if some random guy, like his brother, just got shot by someone randomly, you know, no one would care. Really, really powerful line there that I think uh, could have been a lot more controversial, I think, if he released it today. Because I feel like in 2012, social media wasn't quite as big and as popping as it is as, uh, at the moment. You know, you've got your TikToks, you've got your Twitters. You've got your Facebooks. Facebook was always big, but I don't know, man. I think that lyric really could have set the world on fire if he released that now. Bad religion being another, man. Oh boy, the idea of comparing unrequited love to religion and how 
you know, if it brings you to your knees, it's a bad religion. Of course, the idea of if, if, if a person or if a love interest brings you to your knees, it's not good. Again, some controversial lines in this track were kind of linking religion to love and how maybe it's not all how it's set up to be. Another track that I think could rub people the wrong way, but I think he does it really well. And of course, I can't finish off without at least mentioning Pyramids, which is probably the most ambitious effort that the album has to offer. A really long track, longer than most Frank Ocean songs, period. And uh, yeah, it's really cool. It's really cool. I don't think it is his best track because I know a lot of people out there do b believe it's his best song, but I don't think it's quite on the level of that. But I do like the transitions though and the different phases and the vocals where it's like, uh, 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 uh. like it's really catchy. It's really impressive how he's able to shift the song in different directions and each section is as good as the last one. It's a cool track. But ultimately, man, this is a fantastic album. It just always brings me joy every time I listen to it. I just find the music so enjoyable, man. And the singing and the choruses, there's just so much to love about this. And yeah, I think I think Frank Ocean is uh, a man of, of talent. He's a man of talent. There you go. There you go. I think he's pretty much destined to go down as one of the modern greats, especially if he drops another album soon and it lands as strongly as his previous ones. But even with the discography he has so far, you could still make him uh, at that level. You could put him on that pedestal because I think this album particularly stands out in such a great way. And yeah, it's fantastic. It's aged so well. Thank you for watching this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Let me know your thoughts on what I had to say. If you agree or disagree, thank you. Tell me, please. Tell me, please. And uh, yeah, what do you think is the best song in this album? What do you think about this album overall? Thank you for watching as always. Subscribe if you haven't already. And goodbye.